Hey everyone, welcome back to Cruising with Matthew and today I'm going to share with you some hints and tips about P&O Cruiser's newest ship, Iona. So hopefully when you get on board you can make the most of this fantastic ship. So I really hope you enjoy this video. Number 1. Iona is a big ship. Now, at the risk of sounding like I'm stating the obvious a little bit, I just want to highlight how big Iona is. At the time of recording, she is actually the 8th largest cruise ship in the world, and as a result, she has a huge amount of choice on board, offering 30 different bars and restaurants, 4 pools and a ton of cabin choices to choose from. However, due to the fact that she is so big, there is often a lot of walking involved to get from point A to point B. Now, although this is very good if you're wanting to burn off all the calories that you've accumulated on your cruise, it is something to consider if you have mobility issues or if you're not used to the larger ships. If you do have mobility issues, you can still have a fantastic time on Iona. I'd recommend that you situate yourself closer to the lifts or stairs, or potentially have a look at the deck plans and see which areas you'd visit most often in the ship. Another trade-off for the fact that she is so big is the fact that she can carry up to 5,200 people. Now, that is a lot of people and some people may think that Iona will end up feeling really crowded but do note that these ships are designed to carry this many people and when I was on board Iona felt really spacious with tons of deck space and plenty of seats in the public areas. Number two make the most of the promenade deck. Now a feature that I absolutely adore on board Iona has to be the promenade deck and it's nice to see a new build to have a full wraparound promenade deck and this is something that I missed on ships like Celebrity Silhouette and also P&O's flagship Britannia. The promenade is perfect for taking in the fabulous views you get whilst at sea and also in port. In the middle of a ship, the promenade also juts out slightly, so it means that you get a really cool perspective looking down either side of the ship, and is a site for some fantastic photos as well. Another feature which can be found on the promenade deck has to be those fantastic infinity whirlpools. I think this is a really good idea because it means that if you're sunbathing on this deck, you don't have to go all the way up to the main pools on the top decks if you're wanting to cool off. It also gives you another opportunity to enjoy some fantastic sea views, so I really appreciate it. Number three, those conservatory cabins. Now, a quirky feature that has been highlighted ever since the deck plans were released for Iona are the conservatory mini suites which are situated on the promenade deck on deck eight. Now these actually back right onto the promenade deck, meaning that you are some distance from the sea, and I would argue is actually an obstructed view. Additionally, as it backs onto the promenade deck, people will be walking past your balcony and can actually look in. Now there is privacy glass, but it's only half a person's height, so you can still look straight into the balcony and cabin, even if you're not intending to. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing depending on your personality type, as I saw some people happily standing at the edge of their balconies chatting to people passing by, but personally I would find this really uncomfortable and I'd rather not have a balcony at all than have one right on the promenade deck, so it's definitely worth looking out for when you are booking. If you really want a conservatory mini suite because they do look quite interesting, I'd recommend that you choose the select fair so you can choose an exact cabin number so you know that you won't be on deck 8 or alternatively look at the deck plans and find grades within this cabin type which aren't on deck 8. Number 4. Try the Olive Grove. Now the Olive Grove is a new restaurant for P&O Cruisers and is a Mediterranean style restaurant and although it is classed as extra charge, most of the food options listed on the menu are actually included within your fare. So it means that you can try food different to that of the main dining rooms but not have to pay any extra. It is tucked away to one side of deck 8 near the quays but I'd recommend that you seek it out and book it early on in your cruise as it gets very popular as more and more people find it. I really enjoy the Mediterranean style decor as well and the staff here were really friendly. The food here is really impressive and I'd recommend that you select some of the sharing platters because it means that you get to try a little bit of everything and no matter how full you are I'd urge you to try the hazelnut cake because trust me it is to die for. Number five have a drink at the sunset bar. 
Now if you're like me and you love watching the wake of the ship then I'd urge you to visit the sunset bar which occupies the aft area of the promenade deck. It is the perfect place to relax with a coffee or cocktail and just watch the wake of the ship as you sail to your next destination. There's lots of seating here with most of it facing out to sea and they also have these large canopies which covers the area in case of inclement weather. On either side of the sunset bar there's also two gigantic whirlpools as well and these prove to be very popular indeed. Do note that one side of the sunset bar is dedicated to smokers, but especially when Iona is underway and sailing to your next port of call, there never really seem to be any issues with smelling smoke because the wind tended just to take it over the side, so it didn't cause any issues in my opinion. Number 6. Listen to the limelights in the Limelight Club. Now the Limelight Club is a extra charge venue which offers a three course meal and then a cabaret style performance from visiting entertainers. It costs around £25 and you get to enjoy performances from individuals like Lavoie and tends to be really popular. However, if you don't manage to book a spot or if you're on a budget like I often am, you can go and see the Limelights, which is the resident band there, perform their own sets. This tended to be after the main event and I really enjoyed ending a night here with a few glasses of wine. The band here was super talented and covered a wide range of genres, so I definitely recommend if you like me and you enjoy your live music because it gives you yet another entertainment option to enjoy whilst you're on board. Number seven enjoy a coffee at Vista's Coffee Bar. One of the best features of Iona is the three deck high grand atrium which features these gigantic glass panels which runs all the way up the side of the atrium and gives you fantastic views of the sea. There's a fantastic array of venues in this area including the glass house and the keel and cow but my favourite spot was the Vista's Coffee Bar because I love sitting next to the huge glass windows enjoying some fantastic sea views and a really nice coffee coupled with an interesting book. In my opinion, it doesn't get much better than this. And if you're wanting something extra special, there's also a variety of extra charge cakes on offer here as well. Number eight, dine at the Keys. The Keys is a new dining concept for P&O cruisers and is actually included within your fare. This gives you three additional options, including the Boardwalk Diner, where you can have burgers and hot dogs, hook, line and vinegar, which serves fish and chips, and also Asian Fusion. This features a lot of veggie and vegan meals and I really enjoyed these because I always try and have something different on a cruise. So I'd recommend that you try Asian Fusion in particular. There's also a little side area offering a variety of salads as well as lovely desserts. And in the morning, breakfast is served here as well with very similar options to what you get in the larger Horizon Buffet. This area is noticeably quieter than the buffet and if your cabin is on one of the lower decks, there's a lot less walking involved to get to it which is always good. Number nine, Iona is only freedom dining. Now a distinguishing feature from other members of the P&O fleet is the fact that Iona is exclusively freedom dining, meaning that you can dine at any time from 6 till 9.30. Although this gives you a lot of freedom to dine when you want, I was a bit disappointed that they had completely got rid of the club dining concept on Iona, where you would dine at the same table and time each night, either at 6.30 for first sitting and 8.30 for second sitting. The reason I'm not a massive fan of this is because I really enjoy getting to know the waiters and you can't really do that on freedom dining because you tend to have a different waiter each day and I like having a set routine and not having to wait for a table to be available. It is a small thing and very much down to my own personal preference but I do I do wish they had at least one small restaurant dedicated to club dining because that's an aspect of traditional cruising that I really missed on Iona. Finally, another thing to be aware of is the fact that on Iona, P&O have reduced the number of formal nights or celebration nights to one a week. Now again, this is personal preference, but a formal night is a real highlight for me on a cruise. I appreciate that P&O is trying to attract new people to cruising, which is fantastic, and I imagine that includes a lot of my generation, but one thing that I don't like is the assumption that younger cruisers don't want as many formal nights. That isn't the case, as me and my friends have always enjoyed dressing up formally, whether or not it was a special occasion at university or formal nights on a cruise, it's something we really enjoy. So I wish that Iona still had two formal nights each week. The more formal nights, the better in my opinion. And I hope this doesn't become standard for all the P&O ships because I think that would be a massive shame. But again, that's my opinion. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Number 10, 
watch the aerial shows in the Sky Dome. The Sky Dome itself is a really interesting all weather venue, but I would urge you to go to every single one of the aerial acrobatic shows taking place here, as the entertainment that I saw in this venue was absolutely incredible and probably some of the best I've ever seen on a ship. There's a variety of options involved, such as an avian theme show called Rise and also Tribu, which features two battling tribes, and I couldn't get over the sheer skill and talent involved in putting these shows together, although they can be very popular, so make sure you get there in good time for a good seat. A little tip though is to try and go for one of the later showings because it's then pitch black outside and it really helps showcase the specialist lighting the Sky Dome has. This is especially true for the Ignite laser show because it really showcases what the Sky Dome's technical team can do and it was an absolute spectacle to watch so I'd recommend that you visit that one as well. So hopefully this video has given you an idea as to what things you can look out for when you're on board Iona. Although she isn't perfect, she is a fantastic addition to the P&O fleet. A ship the size of Iona has a dizzying amount of choice, and although I was on board for seven nights, I still couldn't do everything I wanted to do. However, I'm sure that in whatever you do, you will have a fantastic time on board the newest ship in the P&O fleet. So I really hope you enjoyed my hints and tips video on P&O Cruiser's newest ship, Iona. If you have, please like and subscribe because it's always appreciated. If you want to know more about Cruising with Matthew, then take a look at some of my other social media sites. The links are in the description below. I hope that you're all doing well at the moment and I can't wait to see you in my next video. So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew and thank you so much for watching.